So the first step that uh, we went through in Healthy Child is to develop an abstraction layer on top of which we were able to uh, provide more advanced viable uh, services. That abstraction layer is installed within the hospital uh, through what we call an access point and then the end user is provided with a, a simple USB stick. Mine comes with a nice teddy bear. So this USB stick is a portable solution that works under a different operating system because in the four hospitals that we've been dealing with, uh, we faced quite heterogeneous armors, uh, different operating systems, different network configurations. So we've developed a Java-based uh, suite of applications allowing the seamless connection uh, to our framework from within uh, specialized networks such as the ones you have in Hobbit. So in my case, I was on my patient, Gosh41, and what I'm interested in is to understand the shape of his uh, ventricles to see at what point in time I will have to re-intervene on my patient to correct the abnormalities and to, uh, uh, and to uh, treat him appropriately. So here, I have asked the system to retrieve the 3D plus T MR scan of the heart of the patient from which the system is going to extract 3D uh, shapes of left and right ventricles. So what you can see here is the original scan of the patient onto which is superimposed uh, the two um, meshes, 3D meshes of the right ventricle of the patient in, in orange and the left ventricle uh, which is in the back. Uh, so, why is this useful? It's a 4D anatomical model of the heart. It is useful because I can understand the shape of, of the right ventricle of my patient. I can measure the volume of blood that is being pumped and rejected. And I can make a decision very simply when to re-intervene on my patient because it's a disease in which you have to wait for the patient to grow so that the organ gets a, a, a stable shape. Uh, and you have to measure the um, different parameters like the uh, pulmonary stenosis, which is the narrowing of the uh, uh, outflow tract uh, within the right ventricle. So you have to understand all these parameters to make a decision uh, when to intervene and when to uh, apply for surgery. I can ask for similar uh, children having similar conditions, so I'm going to take a, a, a I'm going to ask the system to look for patients having the same uh, body mass index and the same uh, left and right ventricle ejection fraction, which is the volume of blood that is being pumped and, and rejected by the ventricles. I will set a, a maximum number of cases I want to get back in my diagram and run this. What you see here is so-called a neighborhood graph. Uh, it's really popular in uh, social networks. Uh, so, using uh, that, that type of graphs where each node is a patient, uh, you can very quickly, and this is what we see here, identify the most similar uh, cases uh, compared to yours. This is GOSH41, and you can see that there are three similar cases at Necker. I know because the alias HEC is uh, coming from Necker, and there is one another at GOSH. You can then show much more data. So you can, for instance, show the body mass index, <coughs> the parameters you've selected. You can select more, like, for instance, the right ventricle dilation, which is interesting in tetralogy of fallout. And here you have the data that you've just selected. So it's a simple way of uh, showing uh, data attached to patients. Then you can play with various things like colors to highlight other clinical parameters like gender or more, uh, more clinically relevant ones like heart rate. So this very quickly shows you groups of patients that have similarities that you may be interested in investigating. <coughs> you can filter. So you can play with this whole graph and navigate your, your entire population. Here I'm loading a cardiac simulation that was applied onto my, my patient data uh, to, um, to obtain a, a personalized model of his heart. This is, this is a full anatomical, biomechanical, electrical uh, model of the heart that is superimposed on the uh, patient data that you can see here. So here you can see uh, the two, uh, the right ventricle, the left ventricle. What's interesting is that that patient has a tetralogy of fallout. 
he has as a consequence an aneurysm of the right ventricle here. So this part of the heart is misbehaving. <coughs> so in the final surgery, what would happen is that we would cut this, repair, and then uh, the patient would feel much better and have a, a normal blood flow. What's interesting in this is that it's, it's not a simple 3D model. It's a complete model of the heart. So what can I do with this? I can load it in a surgery simulation application so far, and I can uh, simulate what I want to do on my patients. So here I can start cutting uh, this aneurysm and then repair and so on. I apologize, my computer is not really powerful, so it's not really going smoothly. But this is what I can typically do with that, with such an application. So what I would do is to cut, repair, and re-simulate using that heart model to understand if my surgery was good without touching my patient physically. So now let's say I'm a clinical researcher <coughs> or a student and I want to understand better this, uh, what this, this major uh, defect uh, caused by the, the tetralogy of Fallot, which is the interventricular uh, septal defect, this hole between the two ventricles. I can go to that application which is called 3D Knowledge Browser. On the left, after you've queried the system and specified the layers you are uh, interested in, uh, we render a 3D representation of the, con the, the ontological concepts that were found in the uh, ontologies that we are using underneath. This is what you can see. And by clicking on these concepts and, and, and the links, so for instance, uh, that, that one which is the uh, anatomic region for this interventricular uh, septal defect, I can get an access to the literature that concerns that, that uh, particular defect. So here, the system has found from PubMed uh, various abstracts of papers that are potentially dealing with this uh, defect. So this is what this application is about, querying using ontologies different data sources. One is literature, scientific literature, to find out abstracts. Another is the patient database, to find patients that are, uh, that, that uh, potentially uh, <coughs> corresponds to what you're looking for. And the, la the last one is, uh, as uh, you mentioned, um, a bridge to the aneurysm project through the annulic uh, application developed by uh, Fraunhofer where we can focus on the genes that may be involved in that uh, defect uh, of the tetralogy of Fallot. So here, the system has queried uh, the Anulink database through the Anulink API, and I can then have a look at the papers, the, the, the literature that was found uh, relating to the uh, potential genes that are involved uh, in this uh, disease. <coughs>